Hey everybody, welcome back. This is Miss Day. So we've been talking about using watercolors to create a still life painting of flowers. And I have an example here um, that I created several years ago. Um, so you have the option of <clears throat> uh, showing the, uh, the vase with the flowers or um, you could just focus in and just do like a single flower Here again, this one is based on a Georgia O'Keeffe, as well as this one. We talked about Georgia O'Keeffe when we um, first discussed having this assignment. Um, I also want you to, to keep in mind your color choices. As you can see here, this first one, this is actually complementary colors because I'm using uh, basically purple and yellow, and those are complementary colors on the color wheel. This is a similar, um, theme except it's actually warm and cool so I put all of the warm colors on the flower and the cool colors in the background this is um, well I would almost have to say that it started out as a primary color scheme but when I mixed um, the colors I started getting a brown um, that I worked into the background so this um, has more neutrals in the back and the brighter color coming towards the front this is another one that's based on warm and cool colors um, of course warm colors always want to pop forward and cool colors sink back so this just brings me up to a couple of uh, of examples that uh, I've been working on. Um, so I do want you also to take your paper and create a value scale at the bottom of your paper. Um, so I would like for you to to work out a value scale with your tints and your shades based on the color that you'll be using for your flowers. You may have different color flowers and you may want to do more than one value scale. It's up to you, it's just that this will really help you uh, when you start to paint the flowers to um, make sure that you're using all of the, the um, tints and shades. Um, all right, so I'm going to first walk you through creating the value scale. Let's see, let's see if I have a blank created the value scale. Sorry about that, I thought I had a blank piece of paper handy. All right, so in order to create this value scale, um, I want you to um, have a three inch section across the bottom of your paper. So I'm just gonna come up here, make sure zero is at the bottom of the paper, put a mark at three. Zero is at the bottom of the paper, put a mark at three. And then you're gonna connect those marks together so that's my three inch section on the bottom of the paper. Now to create the actual value scale, um, just put a line across the bottom. I don't, I don't care how much space is from the bottom. What I care about is that it's got, that it's an inch tall. All right, so just make sure you're measuring an inch tall. So if I put four on this line, then I know that I need to mark it three, okay. So I know that uh, measure twice to make sure that it's straight. Measure twice to make it nice. All right, so now I'm gonna come through here and I'm gonna put my marks for my boxes. So I'm putting the ruler, lining it up with that bottom line, making sure the zero is on the edge of the paper. And I'm gonna put a mark at one, two, Three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, and of course 12 is the edge of the paper. To make sure these are straight, I need to do the same thing to this other line. So I'm going to come up here and put my marks also here. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. 10, 11, 
and then you just line these up. So you line up the marks. For this demonstration, I'm actually using a pretty dark pencil. It's a 6B. Um, I don't necessarily recommend using a 6B for this assignment because um, 6Bs are very soft, they're very dark, and um, it could muddy up your watercolor. It could, uh, it can smear. So uh, when you're doing your drawing up here, it's best to use a 2H um, or any H pencil. Um, the highest I would go is like an HB, which is um, a number two. So <clears throat> back to the value scale. So this is our value scale. So you're going to choose one that's going to be your pure color. And uh, I'm going to say this one is going to be my pure color. And when I go this direction, it's going to be the tints. And as I go this direction, it will be the shades. And you remember from previously, tints and shades um, are when you mix your color with either black or white. So, get a clear spot on my plate. Okay, so I got my plate cleaned off. Um, I'm going to make an orange. Orange is going to be my pure color. So I'm starting off with a lot of yellow. And then I'm going to add a little bit of red. Cleaning my brush. Get a little bit of red here. And I'm only going to mix in a little bit at a time so that uh, I can get it the exact color that I want. And actually, that looks pretty good right there. Well, it might be a little light. I think I'm going to, I'll make it a little bit. Okay. That's more like it. All right, so I'm going to add some water to this, okay, because I want, um, the paint to do the watercolor techniques and brush strokes, so I need to make sure that it has lots of water. I'm mixing a lot of water with it. Okay, now I'm actually going to switch to a watercolor brush. Watercolor brush just makes a softer mark. Okay, so you can see the watercolor brush, these are nice and fluffy. You can always tell it's a watercolor brush by how fluffy it is. <clears throat> okay, so my pure color here. So I'm going with this uh, orange. Okay. All right, so for tints, you know, you're going to be adding white, or in this case, since we're using this as watercolor, you're going to add water. So I'm going to isolate some of my paint. Um, let's see, where am I going to move this paint? Okay, I will move it over here. All right, so I'm taking some of it, setting it aside so that I can mix it with the water. So I'm going to mix a drip of drip of water, dot of water with this. And we should be able to see that it's a little bit lighter when we paint the next box. Okay? Another drip of water. Another drip of water. And it looks pretty similar, but it's starting to get lighter. Another drop of water. Okay, that was getting really light. Okay, another drop of water. Another drop of water. So those are my tints.
Okay, so that's my tints. Started with my pure color and then I added water as I went across. Okay, now we're gonna do the shades. So for the shades, um, I'm sure as you remember, we're gonna be adding black. So I'm gonna come back over here uh, to my original pure color. I'm gonna grab some of that color, move it over here to the side. And I'm gonna be mixing black with that color. So right here. All right, let me get some black paint. Just a little dot. I'm gonna put it right here because I know that I got too much. All right, just a little bit. Mix it up. Hold just a second, please. All right, I'm back. So as I was saying, to create your shades, you're gonna take your color and mix it with um, a dot of black. So here we go. Actually, I'm gonna see if I can move it to this side over here. Okay, so here it is. I've mixed a dot, putting it right here. So that's my original orange with one dot of black. I'm gonna go in and get another dot, mix it in. And I'll paint the next box. Another dot of black, mix it with the orange. Oh, okay, I think I got quite a bit that time. A little bit more than I intended. Okay. All right, a little bit more. Pretty similar. I try a little bit more. Okay, now I get. Okay, here we go for our last. All right, so that's the shades. So you can see that the shades are going from uh, the pure color and you add a dot of black as you go uh, down towards the left. Okay, so brings us back to the process of painting the actual flower. So I asked you to consider the rule of three. Uh, so if you will just, um, well, actually, I'll show you this one. I'll let this one dry a little bit. So if you take a look at this image that I've worked on here, you can see there's kind of some sketch marks here. This is just a practice. But I've put some sketch marks here to kind of remind me of the rule of three. And I made sure that there was a flower in this intersection. And there's a little bit of a flower here and somewhat of a flower in this intersection. So I usually... Uh, try to hit these three corners. Those are the ones that I like. Um, but you could do these three corners or you could just do this one. It's your choice. So um, I've drawn uh, the flowers here with pencil pretty dark. Um, like I said, I would suggest you using a really light pencil, but that's really hard to make a video with a light pencil. Um, I went over this flower. Let's see if I can zoom in. I went over this flower actually with pen so that the lines are even darker. You can do that, but you need to make sure it's a permanent uh, ink pen. Okay, so let's bounce back over here to one of these. This one's dry, so I'll use this one. All right, so keeping in mind that rule of three, all right, so it's some, somewhere, so somewhere like right in, right in here where I wanna make sure that I have something interesting. So I'm going to have one flower right here. OK, 
okay, and here's the center of that flower. Okay, there's another one here. So I'm just, I'm looking at, uh, I'm looking at uh, the flower arrangement that I have right here. And I am simply drawing the image onto the paper. This obviously is a lot quicker and sketchier than what I had asked you to do, but this is just for demonstration purposes. Okay, so this is my flowers here. And I can see the vase here. Okay, so I overshot this one. I need to Adjust, come back and adjust that. Okay, another leaf here. <coughs> Excuse me. And another leaf over here. <coughs> Pardon me. All right, so my strategy would be to um, just create like a wash over the entire background, um, something like this, and then I would come back in and lift out uh, the paint around the flowers. And um, I did something similar here. So this one I, I, did a, uh, I did wet on dry here, and you can see it doesn't lift out as well. And uh, I did wet um, on wet up through here so that you wouldn't be able to see uh, the brush strokes as much, but I did use some salt. I don't know if you can see that but the salt starting to dry and it created a very nice speckled pattern. So um, I've already got this green mixed up, so I think I'm gonna go with this green. I'm gonna create a wash. So uh, in order to create a wash, uh-oh, I need to paint my paper with water. So I'm gonna come across here and paint my paper with water. And uh, make sure my paint is nice and watery. And actually, I think I'm going to add a little bit of yellow. I'd like it to be a little bit more yellow green. So I'm going to do a yellow green here. Okay. All right. So I'm just going to go right across the whole entire thing. And if I keep moving and don't pick up any more paint, it will kind of start to create a faded effect. All right, and you just leave that, let it dry. Um, as far as the, the flowers, when I was talking about lifting them out, just make sure you clean your brush. Clean your brush off really well. Take your clean brush and then lift that paint off of the flower. 
course, if you use a smaller brush, uh, you can get more details, but it's going to take longer. So I suggest using a larger brush just to pull those out. something like that. I'm not worried too much about the leaves. I know the leaves are going to be some variation of a green, so the yellow green is not really going to influence them. I'll try it one more time to come across the flowers. Okay. All right, so remember you're supposed to be using the watercolor brush strokes and techniques. So, so far, um, I've used lifting. Uh, I also did a, a flat wash and I did wet on wet. So I've already done three, which is uh, uh, I'd like for, for you to use at least three brush stroke techniques and three uh, watercolor techniques. So um, let's see, I can see a little bit here that I missed right up here. So as, as I'm allowing this to dry, I can start to think about what I want to do down here on this bottom section. And um, in my other piece, um, I am going to use violet for the flowers and yellow for the background. So if you remember when we studied neutralize, I decided to mix those two together and I got this nice brown and that's what I did as the table, kind of a neutral. So. Um, if I was to mix the violet with <clears throat> the yellow green, so let's see here, a little bit of blue. All right, so I just mixed up a neutral here, and actually it was more blue and orange than anything. Uh, so I'm going to come across here and put that in for my table. These washes are just really um, to give the background kind of a tone. I'm going to come back and lift some of this out for the base. Okay. So remember, as you're working with watercolor, you just need to work at, at it in stages and you need to allow it time to dry. Um, before you move on to the next stage. So I'm just going to allow this to dry for a few minutes uh, before I, I go on to the next thing. And what I would do next is I would uh, make, make sure that I had this pure color mixed up and then I would come in and start uh, laying it in uh, on the flowers and um, keeping in mind that the darker the, the color or the darker the value, it's going to push it back the lighter the value, it's going to bring it forward. So highlights are white, shadows are dark, right? Shadows are, or shades are mixed with black. All right, good luck.